If you've been looking for the perfect video to teach you how to install the GD EMU Optical Drive Emulator in your Sega Dreamcast without glossing over the important steps, you've found it. I'll show you everything it takes to install a GD EMU in your own Dreamcast, just like this one. And it all starts right now. According to the GDEMU website, which I have linked for you in the description, you need a VA1 model Dreamcast. Check the bottom sticker on your Dreamcast and look for the number one in the circle. If you have something other than the VA1 model of Dreamcast, chances are this isn't going to work for you. These GDEMU clones are readily available on eBay, and boy are they ever getting cheap. Look at this, these things are getting down in the $40 to $45 range on eBay. This is incredible. It seems like just about a year or maybe two ago, these things ran for about $100. This is crazy. And check this out, the 3D printed kits that I'm going to feature in the video are running about $17 now. Not long ago, these ran around $30 US. It's just crazy how cheap this stuff is getting. Here's the SD card I feature in the video and use with my own Dreamcast. It's been fast and reliable. I've got links to the GDEMU, the 3D printed tray, and the SD card for you in the description below. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver and potentially a number one Phillips screwdriver to get this done, depending on whether or not you purchase the tray. Make sure you have a soft surface to turn the Dreamcast over and turn it over to expose the bottom. Only three are visible at this point, but there are four K screws to separate the top shell from the bottom shell. One's in this corner, one over here in this corner, and one over here in this corner. The fourth screw is actually hidden under the modem. To remove the modem, all you have to do is just press in and then pull out. And then underneath there is the fourth K screw. You can remove all four of these screws with the number two Phillips screwdriver. Then hold the two pieces together and flip the Dreamcast back over. Then you can remove the top shell. Once you have the two pieces separated, you can just take that top lid and set it off to the side. We'll address it in just a moment. To remove the GD ROM drive, there are actually three screws holding the ROM drive and its frame together to the case. One is located here, a second one located right here, and all of these can be removed with the number two screwdriver, and the third screw is located right here. Take these three screws and set them off to the side as we'll be reusing two of them later. Then you can lift and remove the GD-ROM drive from the shell. Make sure you lift from the base of the GD-ROM rather than the top as they are two separate pieces. If you're using the 3D printed tray kit, which I highly recommend, here's what you'll typically get with them. There's a black frame piece for mounting the GD-EMU into the case, some mounting feet which typically come with the GD-EMU that you won't need, an SD card extender and ribbon to be able to access the SD card from the top side of the Dreamcast, one super long screw and some various small screws. The orange tray at the top and the long push button in the middle that goes into the top of that tray lets you access the SD card directly from the top of the Dreamcast just by opening the lid. And the GDEMU is seen in the bottom corner. I found the easiest way to attach the GDEMU board to the bracket that goes into the case is just take the bracket and set it down, then set the GDEMU board right on top of it. But don't do this over the Dreamcast because if the screwdriver slips, well, you might stab the screwdriver into something that you don't want it to go into. 3D printed plastics are great, but they're also soft and they may have variances in tolerances, meaning the screw holes may or may not be a completely perfect fit for the screws you intend to put in there or not. In this case, I'm using that one single long screw to go ahead and secure the GDEMU board to the bracket. And that screw is long enough to go through the GDEMU board, the bracket, and ultimately into the Dreamcast frame. My wife Angie, who's also a gamer, took an interest in this project too. So she sat along with me while we worked on the project together. And while I was securing the GDEMU drive down to the bracket, this happened. I didn't know if you wanted to go all the way through since you still have to hook it to the board here. Oh God. <laughs> Yep, I screwed the GDEMU and the bracket completely through and down into our dining room table. Hey, nobody's perfect. All right, backing that screw out just a little bit so I can pull it off the table and we can go put it into the Dreamcast. And I know you want to see the hole in the table, so if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll have a picture of it there waiting for you. 
The motherboard interface for the GD-ROM and now the GD-EMU board is right here. You'll need to line up the plug that's on the bottom of the GD-EMU board with the port that's on the motherboard. Once you have these two things lined up, just press down until it sits firmly in place. It should seat nicely into the port. Now use two of the original three screws that you removed from the GD-ROM to tighten the GD-EMU board the rest of the way down to the bracket. I found it easier to do it this way just so you had a little bit of wiggle room with the board to make everything line up nicely in the case. Then you can tighten that long screw until it goes down into the Dreamcast case to secure the bracket. With the GD-EMU board mounted to the bracket and the bracket mounted to the Dreamcast, let's focus attention on the lid. Start with your 3D printed piece that's meant to fit in the lid. This is your tray that you're going to put the SD card extender into. It's got three holes on it and it orients in this direction and it actually matches kind of in the same triangle pattern as the lid does and should fit snugly in place. The small screws that came with your 3D printed kit are meant to install this tray into the lid. These really shouldn't require any pre-tapping as they're meant to go through the tray and go directly into the stud posts that are on the underside of the lid. Now you can insert the SD card extender into the tray. This is the top piece and this is the bottom. The top side has the curve on it so that you can get your finger in there in order to insert and remove the SD card. Slide it all the way in until it seats firmly in place and the two wings on the side with the screw mounting holes are lined up with the holes on the tray. Make sure you set the ribbon cable off to the side carefully so as to not damage it. Use two of the small screws provided with the kit to secure the SD card reader to the underside of the tray. With the top tray assembly complete, take the other end of the extender that looks kind of like an SD card, make sure the pins are facing toward the GDEMU board, and just insert that extender piece into the SD card slot on the GDEMU board. Once you have it seated under the board, take that ribbon cable and just kind of fold it up and make sure that it's not impinched anywhere as it goes back into the case and then secure the top lid to the bottom case on the Dreamcast. Once you have the top lid back in place, hold the two pieces together, the top and the bottom, and flip the Dreamcast back over. Then put the four case screws back in place using a number two screwdriver. And with the four case screws secured back in place, take the modem and slide it back into the case. That's everything you need to do to install the Dreamcast GDEMU, but don't forget to pop the lid open and put that little push pin in the top center area of the tray. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, make sure you subscribe while you're here. You'll get valuable information on leveling up your video game hardware and software, and we have an incredible group of gamers here. You belong here with us. Smash the subscribe button and ring the bell to become a part of something special. For the GDEMU to be able to load games, you need the GD Menu software from the GDEMU WordPress website. Scroll down on the page until you see the text listing for GD Menu and the link underneath it. Click on the link and you'll be taken to this Mediafire page where you can click the blue download button to download the GD Menu software. GD Menu needs an SD card that's formatted in FAT32 format. Hopefully you're using a card larger than 32 gigabytes for all those wonderful Dreamcast games. But Windows can't natively format storage media larger than 32 gigabytes in FAT32 format. That's where GUI format comes in. Download it at the link in the description below. Go ahead and put the SD card you intend to use with your GDEMU into your computer. You'll need to identify the drive letter for the SD card and you don't want to get this wrong. In this case, you can just go to this PC and then hover over the various drive letters until you identify the correct one. In this case, I'm using that 128 gigabyte card I showed you at the beginning of the video, and it's gonna be under Drive G. But make sure to select the correct drive letter for your own computer. Navigate to the download folder, and you'll have two different things there. The first one is the GD menu and zip format, and you should have the GUI format. I recommend running this as administrator if you have administrative access to the machine. If not, you should be okay. Right click for run as administrator and when prompted, select yes. The first thing you really, really want to do is make sure that you have the correct drive letter selected in the top left corner. In this case, I do, it's drive G. See, you can format your Windows hard drive, your drive C using this software. 
You can name the volume or the name of the SD card right here. I like to name these things subscribe as a reminder not to forget to subscribe to the channel while you're here. Make sure the quick format is checked. There's no need to go through that extensive format. And then come down to start and click on start. And when prompted, click on OK to begin the format process. Once it's finished, you can close out GUI format and you'll have an SD card formatted all the way through in FAT32 format. With the SD card still in your computer, extract the contents of the GD menu file that you downloaded. GD menu is a front end that lets you launch your games. Once you've extracted the zip file, make sure you delete it to eliminate clutter and confusion. Go into the GD menu folder and you're gonna need to copy some files from it directly over to the SD card. You need the 01 folder and the gdmenu.ini file, but you don't need the readme file. Copy the 01 folder and the ini file. You can just drag over them, right click and select copy. Now navigate over to your SD card. Remember in this case I named it subscribe and it's letter G. Right on the root of the SD card, right click and select paste. You want to paste 01 and gdemu.ini right onto the root of the SD card. Excellent. Now that you've got the menu system set up, let's transfer some games. I've got three CDI formatted games here and you can use CDI or GDI. I found the easiest thing to do is to split these up into two different file explorer windows. One that has the SD card open and the other that has your game files open. See here's the deal. See how you have this 01 folder on here? The game files need to go in numbered folders on the SD card and 01 always has to be the GD menu. So you'll need to start with 02. Right click inside your SD card and scroll down to New and select Folder. Then type 02 on your keyboard to name the first game folder 02. Then you can start dragging a game file over directly into this folder. It's probably best to do them in alphabetical order because whatever order you put these game files into these folders is exactly how it shows up on the menu, and the menu does not allow you to sort them. Now at this point you can just start adding folder numbers sequentially. Right click, pick new, add folder number 03. Then grab your next game and drag it and drop it in 03. Then as they like to write on the back of shampoo bottles, this is just a matter of lather, rinse and repeat. Right click, new, folder, 04, and then grab the next game file and drop it into folder 04. You can repeat this process for as many games as your SD card will hold. And once you're done, you can close out File Explorer because you're done copying software. You can remove the SD card from your computer, put it into your Dreamcast, and power on your Dreamcast. This is the GD menu main interface. In the top left corner, you'll see the numbers of the folders on your SD card, along with the game content in each one. See, this is why I recommended putting them in alphabetical order. There's actually no way to sort them, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But at least this way, you can find your content quickly and easily. In the right side, you'll see some basic information about the GD EMU in the menu. And at the bottom, you'll see some navigation icons telling you which button on the controller does what. Let's take a look at the menu. Press the X button on the controller to go into the menu. You'll have several choices here, options, sysinfo, and about. Use the D-pad to navigate to options and press A. You'll get the options to set the GDEMU to region free, which I recommend. Force VGA, if you want to force VGA and have VGA as a connection option. In-game reset, turn on if you want to be able to use the button combination on your controller to reset your game with the controller. Boot intro if you want to get rid of the boot intro with the Dreamcast logo. And Sega license if you want to get rid of that. Although I don't recommend it because it has been reported there are some compatibility issues with certain games turning them off. Then scroll down to save settings and select it with the A button. You can also scroll down with the D-pad and select sysinfo with A to see the information about the GDEMU version. Press B to go back, scroll down to About and select it, and see the information about the GD Menu software. Then you can just press B to go back until you get back to the GD EMU main menu. Before we complete the last step of the setup, I just want to say thanks to Jimbo over at Palmetto Gaming in Somerville, South Carolina. They're a huge supporter of the channel, and I was so excited to be able to get this Dreamcast keyboard to give to my wife to use with her favorite Dreamcast game, Typing of the Dead, that I took a picture of it as soon as I got out of the store and into the car with it. They're located at 225 South Cedar Street in Somerville, South Carolina, and you can visit their website at palmettogaming.com. And here's that hole in the table I promised to show you. 
I don't think the missus has even seen it. Well, she has now. But don't worry, it's all in the interest of teaching you how to do something fun, so it's worth it. The last step in the process is to launch a game and see what happens. Use the D-pad to navigate to the game you want. In most cases, you'll get disc art shown on screen. Let's go ahead and launch Typing of the Dead. Select the game you want to launch with the A button, and the Dreamcast will restart and load in the game image that you've selected. And if you've left these options selected, you'll get both the boot screen and the license screen. And in no time at all, you'll be ridding the world of zombies one typed letter at a time. Why not upgrade your Dreamcast to HDMI video output? Check out this video here and linked in the pinned comment and description.